Hey Year 4, hope you're all okay. This is your IPC lesson for today on um, an Egyptian family. So your learning intention is to be able to label and identify different roles and responsibilities in an Egyptian family. So today we're going to look at each member of um, a typical Egyptian family and then we'll also look into a bit about their lifestyle, uh, jobs, housing and that kind of thing as well. Okay, so let's go straight into it then. So family life and marriage. So Ancient Egyptians um, were very family orientated. They placed a lot of high value on it. Um, they considered their children to be a blessing from the gods and they took really good care of them. Marriages were normally arranged by parents. So the parents normally agreed to who the girls would marry. So they would pick or choose someone, a boy, and then they would marry the girl to them. Uh, girls were normally around the age of 14. So it was quite young. Um, and then boys were at the age of about 1920. Um, but if you, it depends on how wealthy you are as well. If you are a wealthier girl, it might be a bit later on where you get married. Um, Egyptian women also had quite a high level of equality to the men, um, but they were still expected to obey their husbands. So equality just means they were seen as the same, um, seen as on the same level as men. So men weren't seen as um, higher up than them. Although Egyptian wives were well respected and they often ran the farms and businesses when their husbands were away. So it was relatively equal. Um, so that was well very good for women because it meant that they were able to do um, certain jobs, which in other tradition, uh, not traditions, in other cultures and things at that time, a lot of women wouldn't be able to do. So let's move on then to boys. So the typical Egyptian boy then. He would learn craft or trade from their fathers and the girls from their mothers. So whatever the uh, dad would have been doing, the um, dad in the family, the father, the boy would tend to just learn what they were doing. So if um, the dad was a farmer, then the boy would learn to farm as well. If they had mummy, uh, money, families would often send boys to school at around the age of seven. That's where they would learn to read and write. Um, and when parents passed away, the land would also go to the sons. So the sons would then be in charge of everything and they would become um, the kind of lead of the house. If they didn't have any sons, then the daughters would inherit everything. Most boys had shaved heads, um, except some of them had long hair that was braided. So you can see in the picture here, this boy has a shaved head. So most of them were shaved. Moving on to girls then. So there actually isn't any evidence showing that girls were educated in a school situation. So girls didn't tend to go to school, um, but there are some that did learn to read and write and occasionally even became doctors. So most of the time they didn't go to school. However, there is the exception in history that they actually did learn to read and write and do um, kind of the same kind of jobs that the men were doing. They often wore their hair in what we call plaits and they were taught homemaking skills and how to manage a household by their mother. So they would often stay at home with the mum and the mum would teach them how to um, prepare meals and prepare food and do all the kind of housework things the mother would be doing at home as well. Moving on to women then. So the mum or the women would typically work around the home. As I just said, uh, they would prepare food, cook meals, clean the house, made clothing and took care of the children. And they also then taught this to their daughters. Uh, poor women would help their husbands work the fields. Wealthier women would manage the servants or perhaps run a business of their own. So it does depend on how rich or poor the family were as to what the roles of the women were. Uh, women would tend to the garden, the ground grain into the floor, knead flour into dough and cook bread. So they would do a lot of cooking. Um, and preparing food for the family. Men, um, they would have worked and depending on their wealth, they would have worked in a variety of different jobs. So I've just listed some here. Um, so we have a farmer. Most, pe most people were farmers, you can see here. They would farm by the River Nile, um, as you probably learned in the lesson that Mr Nugent um, taught you, that that was where the land was the most fertile, so they were able to harvest and grow the most crops there. Um, they might have become craftspeople, so that's where they kind of built a whole load of things, really like carpenters, weaver, jewellers, leather workers and potters. So you can see a picture here. I'll just make it a bit bigger actually for you. So you can see they're all doing all kinds of jobs there. Um, they might have become soldiers, and when there weren't when there wasn't a war and it was in peacetime, soldiers would help with the government projects such as moving a stone for a pyramid or digging a canal. Scribes, so that means they were they would write things down, um, put more it would probably be for the more wealthier families and they would actually be one of the only 
people that could read or write. So they were very important people. And it was very hard to learn because ancient Egyptians, they didn't write using our alphabet. They wrote in something called hieroglyphics, which we're going to look at a bit later on um, in the weeks to come. But it was very hard for them to learn. So it took a lot of years um, to learn that and to master being a scribe. And then you also had priests and priestesses. OK, so not just men could become them. Wealthy women could also become um, a female version of a priest and they were responsible for the temples and held religious ceremonies so that would be for those um, men that were quite wealthy and were able to get those kinds of jobs and i know it's not on there but actually men were also sometimes pharaohs um, a few of you had done some research on pharaohs already so they are kind of like the kings of ancient egypt they ruled um they ruled egypt and that was always the man that did that so clothing them. So the type of clothing depends on how much money they had. As you can see, there's a pattern here. So it depends on how poor or rich the family were as to how, what their lifestyle was like. The wealthy families wore linens of a fine texture, while those that were poor could only afford a coarsely woven linen. So um, the actual texture of what they wore would have been better quality if they had a better job and were more wealthy, which means they had more money. Uh, men often wore kilts. That's kind of like a skirt. Um, younger men wore a shorter version, while older men wore a longer version. And women of higher rank and wore beaded dresses. So women who were in wealthier families wore a dress with, quite often you see the beads at the top, but I think you can see it here in the picture. And during the summer months, most children didn't wear any clothes at all due to the extreme heat. So Egypt is um, very close to the equator and it's, very, it's a very hot country, it still is now. So in ancient Egypt, when it was really hot, most of the children didn't actually wear any clothes. And I'm sure a lot of you are probably laughing at that now. So pets then, I thought I'd include this because I knew you would like this. Uh, most ancient Egyptians loved having pets. Some of the pets included cats, monkeys, birds, dogs, ferrets, lions, tigers, cheetahs and more. So there's a whole variety there. Um, there were many animals in ancient Egypt and many of them were kept as pets and many of them were used for work. So some people might have had horses and things and they would have been used for farming. And it goes into more detail here. So some animals were used for food, farming, transportation. So that means um, getting around to places. And they were also used for cooking as their fat for oil and their body for meat. So they were used for lots of different things. So that's all the information I've got to share with you, really. I've also included um, a photo from a book. So I actually bought a book in the Christmas holidays to share with you all. Unfortunately, I can't um, now, so we'll have to wait till we're back in school. Maybe I'll make a video at the end to show you the book. It's really cool. Um, so I don't know if you can actually read it because it's quite small, but I thought it's just nice to look at anyway. Um, it just goes through all the different parts of ancient Egypt. So this is scribe school. So you can see it's most, it's all boys because the women wouldn't have gone. So it says at the bottom here, girls couldn't become scribes. Some may have learned to read and write, but only for fun instead. And they learned how to spin cloth, weave baskets and bake bread. So they did the house kind of um, housework, whereas the boys went to school and would learn how to scribe and read and write. So you can see lots of different things in the picture. And then this part is all about housing. Um, so it kind of just shows you how they lived. It says down here, a typical house had three or four rooms, a living room, a storeroom with a cellar below, a bedroom and a courtyard with steps up to the roof. So they, this is kind of just like a typical Egyptian house. Um, there's lots of information on here. Like I said, I'll probably make a video at some point to go through the whole of this book, reading it to you because it's a really good book. Or if not, when we come back to school, fingers crossed eventually it won't be too long um then i'll go for it with you then so your task then today is to draw your own egyptian family once you have drawn them you must draw a speech bubble to explain what their roles or responsibilities are and you can do some extra research if you like too so before i show you uh, what i'm kind of expecting you to do i have got actually one more video to show you so i'll just get that up ready show you the video and then i'll show you what the expectation is for your task today so here is the B, uh, the video. It's just from BBC. So if you want to go and have a look at it, it's just um, ancient Egyptians, families, uh, BBC bite size, and you'll be able to find it. Here it is. A headrest for sleeping. That looks really uncomfortable. A 
It's not that bad. Anyway, what would you use? Uh, a pillow maybe. A what? Oh, never mind. I've got to get to work. Work? Seriously? Like, how old are you? Well, everyone around here starts work at my age. Anyway, what's your job? I don't have one. I'm at school. Wow, you can actually read and write. Only people like priests, scribes and royalty learn to do that. We're farmers, so we're too busy working in the fields to be learning. We do proper work. Oh, I see. Are you nearly ready? Putting my makeup on. You could do with some makeup too. Um, have you got my lunch? I've got some fresh bread from the oven. And some garlic and some grapes. Here you are, my little kitten. Mum! You ready? Ready for what? Working in the fields. It's harvest time. Yeah, sure. Uh, I need the loo. No problem. Here you go. Whoa. I know. It's the latest model. You can take the bowl out from underneath and chuck all the poo away and everything. Uh, great. Does everyone here farm? Our way of farming is so efficient. Not everyone here has to help grow crops. We have people like merchants, builders, and doctors here too. Wow. I know. Have you ever seen so much barley? The harvest is going to be amazing this year. Yeah, it's going to be great. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, I just thought it was good to give you a bit more information and it's just another way of allowing you to see how Egyptians used to live without me waffling on at you. <laughs> so your activity then is to draw an Egyptian family. So that's your first part of your task. So draw your family and then you need to think about whether you're going to have a wealthy family or a poor family or some a family kind of in the middle. It's up to you. OK, I don't mind. And you're going to draw speech bubbles coming from each member of the family and they're going to explain what they do and their role and responsibility. And like I said, you can do some extra research if you want to. So this is what I've done. It's not a waggle because I would expect a bit more information from each person, from each member um in yours okay this was just kind of to show you what i was expecting to have so you're going to draw your picture you're not just going to take one from google you'll actually draw each family member and then you're going to draw a speech bubble from each person um and you'll write what they do and their roles or responsibilities so the boy i've put i am eight and i go to school where i learn how to read and write so i can become a scribe then the dad says, I work as a farmer by the River Nile to harvest crops. Now, thinking about it, actually, if the dad's a father, then he probably wouldn't be a scribe because that means they're probably quite poor. So actually, I'm going to change that um, because he would probably be learning how to farm with his father because if they're quite a poor family, they wouldn't be able to um for him they won't be able to pay for him to go to school so i am eight and i learn how to farm with my father okay so hopefully that makes sense and then we have the mum so i've written i spend time preparing food and teaching my daughter household skills and then the daughter i am turning 15 soon and will marry a boy my parents have chosen me i stay at home and learn household skills so you're just going through what their role or responsibility was in ancient Egypt at that time. Um, you can also do a pet if you want. I didn't just because um, I couldn't find a picture of a family with a pet. But if you want to do a pet as well of your choice, then go for it. Um, I hope this video helps. If you have any questions or any um, problems, then send me a message on Teams or you can um, get your parents to email me. Hope you enjoyed watching and I hope I have inspired you to draw your Egyptian family to the best of your ability. So I look forward to seeing them. Once you've done it, try and send a picture of it and see if you can send it on Teams or get more data to attach it to an email to send me send, blah, 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 to send it to me because I would love to see it. Okay. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy your task.